Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus, and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop, and I'm going all the way to heaven, so come on and join me on the road to freedom. Welcome to On the Road to Freedom. As you can see, we are in magnificent Maui, Hawaii today. Yeah. We are preaching over here next Sunday, so we came in early, and we're gonna try to get, you know, 12, 15 shows while we're here. We brought the crew with us. But today we wanna share some information with you that we believe will change your life. You know, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, and that's what we're doing today, we're studying the word of God. He said, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth and you'll be my disciples. And the truth that you learn and know and understand and walk in, it will make you free. Right. And that's the road to freedom. So welcome. We're so glad you came today. My name is Mylon. This is my wife, Christy. She's going to share some holy information with you today. And I believe it's going to make the quality of your life better. And that is the will of God for you today. Yes. And you know, this show, it is for you. We desire that you would be free and yes. free indeed. So today what we want to talk to you about is being free, set free from the spirit of fear. And I was remembering this story when I was growing up. My dad, if I ever got to whining too much, if I got to complaining, <laughs> <laughs> complaining about how hard my homework was or I had too many chores, he would just look at me and smile and he'd say, Christy, don't be a sissy baby. <laughs> <laughs> and every time he said that, I remember in my little childlike mind, immediately I would straighten up and think, I'm no sissy baby. And I realized all of a sudden, what was hard before now, because I changed my attitude, now it seemed easy. Yeah. Now I could do it, I could handle it. I just do it needed, good. yes, yeah. I just needed an attitude adjustment. Yeah. So today what I wanna to talk to you about is, don't be a sissy baby. <laughs> <laughs> and the when it thing, gets tough. When it, when gets, it gets tough, hard. that's right. Because it does. On the earth, it, it does. gets hard someday. Well, Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trials. You're yeah. going to have challenges. But Genesis, according to Genesis 1.28, it says that we are created to have dominion in the earth, yeah. to have authority. It says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply mm. and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over every living creature that moves upon the earth. Amen. So that's why since we were born to have dominion, we are created to have dominion, when we're confronted with those words like wimp, coward, and sissy baby, the anointing within rises up against that weak mentality. We are no sissy babies. According to Romans 8.35, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Now, this is so yes. important for you to know because in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, it says, Who shall separate us, ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering, affliction, tribulation, calamity, distress, persecution, hunger, destitution, peril, or sword? 
amid all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us because we are loved by Almighty God. We are loved by the Most High God, and He's the one whose power no foe can withstand. That's right. So I am convinced that nothing shall ever separate us from the love of Christ, and that's what makes us more than conquerors today. Let me say this to you. God is love, and when the love of God that she's talking about, it has been shed abroad in our hearts, the Bible says, yes. by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So you have within you, not your love, but if you're a Christian, you have the love of God mm -hmm. who has all the power in the universe. And the thing about, the Bible says that love never fails. The reason it never fails is because it never quits. Yeah. It never is defeated because it never stops winning. It perseveres no matter what's going on. Mm -hmm. it, if, if it's hard, the harder it gets to concentrate the more you have to use self-control. Yeah. The harder it is to forgive, the more you have to use self-control. But you make mm -hmm. up your mind right. when God says to do something, mm -hmm. it's the truth. And if I'll do things His way, I can forgive anybody. Mm -hmm. I've had people tell me I can't forgive them. That's not true. You just choose not to, but you can if you choose to. Yes. You have to have the grace of God to do it. You have to do it by faith in the beginning. But if you're willing, and you make the choice to obey God, you can do anything. In fact, the Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And I've watched you do it many times. Go ahead, my love, tell Amen. us how you did it. Amen, well, and two, I just wanna remind you, again, you are no sissy baby, you are more than a conqueror. That's right. Because Romans um, also says 831, if God be for us, then who can be against us? Mm. Praise the Lord. And you might be wondering where this teaching came from, and I just want to let you know, um, Mylon says that there's only one thing that gets me riled up enough where I am <laughs> hollering at the TV <laughs> like he does when you're watching football, when you're watching the Cowboys. Oh, oh if the Cowboys are losing, I holler at yeah. <laughs> Right, you holler. He, he hollers at the referee for a bad call. So there's only one thing that gets me riled up enough where I'm hollering at the TV, and it's this scenario. It's when a family, a sweet couple, let's say a husband and wife are sitting on a, a sofa and they're watching a movie together and all of a sudden the music changes. You know, you hear the Jaws theme. Oh, yeah. And you hear the bad guy, he's you coming through he's the coming. back door, right? Yeah. He's coming. He comes through the back door. They're unsuspecting. He pounces on the man and they begin to fight. Now the husband, he's fighting to the death to protect the woman he loves. And what's the woman doing? What you see her doing most of the time is she's standing in the corner just screaming. <laughs> and crying. And crying and not doing anything to help the man she loves. Now, when I see that. <laughs> then she starts saying, hit him with the lamp, dude. <laughs> Kick him. <laughs> Jump on his. Really grab the frying pan, hit him over the head, do something. Yeah. But don't just stand there and panic in terror and scream, not do anything to help the man you love. So that's where this teaching came from. We are no sissy babies. That's right. We are strong in the Lord and in the power of His and might. And as anointed as they, as they believe they are. Yes. And so really this perception of are women really the weaker sex, I would like to address quickly. And it says in 1 Peter 3, 7, it says in the same way you married men should live considerately with your wives with an intelligent recognition of the marriage relation. Yes. Honoring the woman as physically the weaker. I want you to notice here, this was not a mental or- um, Or emotional. Or emotional or in any other way, but physically or the weaker. Or spiritually. Or spiritually, definitely. Exactly. Um, you know, no matter how much I work out and lift weights, my husband is still always going to be able to lift more than I do. Now, don't get me wrong, ladies. When I need to move that sofa because I want to see it in a new location, oh, yeah. I can move the sofa, and oh, I know yeah. you can too. Even but... if I don't want it moved. <laughs> if she wants it moved, the sofa get... is moving. <laughs> That's right. But in this, he's talking about women as being physically the weaker, but remember that you are joint heirs of the grace of God's unmerited favor of life. We are joint heirs in Christ Jesus. And he says to the husbands, in order that your prayers may not be hindered or cut off. 
Peter's actually instructing the husbands here to honor the wives, that there's a yes. mutual respect yes. for each other's place and role in the marriage. Gentlemen, yes. guys, this is so important. So I cannot overemphasize this. If you want your wife to be the ultimate godly woman, mm -hmm. she's got to have honor just like you do. Mm -hmm. If you want to yeah. receive honor, you need to sow it. It is super, super important. Of all yeah. the ministry that God will ever have me do, there is no more important ministry than me ministering to Him and praise and worship mm -hmm. and faith yeah. and trust and love. But there, my second ministry is not to you. That's third. My second ministry is to her mm -hmm. and my child. Amen. Who, That's who's great. married now, and so she's under her husband's covering yeah. spiritually. But my job mm -hmm. is to honor to mm -hmm. never say words that would take any dignity away from her or any, anything that right. would lower so her good. down and beat her down. Right. My job is to encourage her, build her up. And the more that I do that, the more that she blossoms, the more that I prophesy what I'm wanting, not, not what I have, and she does the same for me. Mm -hmm. I'm a guy who needs to change and grow in a lot of areas, but she doesn't put me down for missing it. She encourages me to continually try to grow and, and reach my potential. Right, And amen. that's the importance of what uh, Peter's saying here. Yes. We're joint heirs. We're joint heirs. With yes. the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says we are one flesh. Mm -hmm. If I speak negatively to my wife, I am hurting myself. Yeah, that's so Because good, we're huh? one flesh from mm -hmm. God's point of view. Mm -hmm. He can't bless her without blessing me. He can't bless me without blessing her. Mm -hmm. So along with being joint heirs of the grace of God, Galatians 3.28 says again, there is now no distinction, Jew or Greek, slave or free. There is neither male nor female, mm. for you are all one in Christ Ooh, Jesus. So we are one in Him. So again, there should be that mutual respect and honor exactly. for each other. Some Amen. denominations and some Christians and we're not against anybody, we don't find fault with anybody else, but some people think that only men can be anointed. Mm -hmm. But that's not what the Bible says. My wife is just as anointed. We're one flesh, that means if I'm anointed, she's anointed. Mm -hmm. If she's serving yeah, the mean. same Christ and she's reading the same word and we're in agreement about it, she worships him with all her heart, what she says is just as anointed as what I say. When he talks about the joint heirs of grace, joint heirs. he talks about the unmerited favor of favor. God. Favor, yeah, amen, that's so good. So women, we are strong. In Proverbs 31, 17, we are anointed to bring strength to the marriage. It says she girds herself with strength. Now that word girds, G-I-R-D-S, it means to surround. She surrounds herself with strength. Yeah. And I really like this. She prepares for action. Now, again, this is the opposite of the woman screaming in the corner, not knowing what to do. This woman of God who is strong in him and in the power of his might, she prepares at all times for action. She girds herself with strength, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness for her God-given tasks so that she can do all that God's called her to do. And she makes her arms strong and firm. So praise God, the woman of God is not a wimp, not a sissy baby, amen. That's right. So the hardest part of this process is choosing to obey God when you feel like quitting, when you feel like whining and complaining when you feel like giving up. That's the hardest part of this process in refusing to be um, a sissy baby. You know, it says in Romans 12 too, it says that be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What you're talking about is the, the hardest part is getting your mind renewed. Once you start thinking right, yes. once you get your attitude right toward this, you're not wimp. You're no. not a wimp. You're no. not weak. That's you it. are not defeated. That's you it. are not a victim. Praise God. You are a champion in Jesus. Yeah. Amen. If you learn who you Amen. are in Christ, you are a victor. Yeah. You are That's strong so good. in the Lord and in the power of His might. Yes, yeah, so love. good, honey. Uh, Matthew 16, 24. This is how you press through. Jesus said to His disciples, if anyone desires to be my disciple, let him deny himself. Mm and take up his cross and follow me, cleaving steadfastly to me and conforming wholly to my example. 
So you deny yourself by choosing to obey when you feel like quitting. Yeah. When you feel like giving in, giving up. Or you get scared. Or you get scared, right. Or you right. feel weak. Mm -hmm. You deny you... those feelings to have a place in your life. You are not moved by what you see. You're not moved by what you feel. We are only moved by what we believe. And that's and, the Word of God. And that's the God. Word of God. Amen. Amen. So, so many times people lose the victory in, in this process because they just quit over how they feel yeah. or how it looks. The reason why this is so detrimental to our victory because if we really live by how we feel, how we feel can change you know, every 45 seconds, it, yeah. our feelings are so fickle. And so we can't depend on our emotions to lead us. The Bible says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. That's right. Amen. So every time you refuse how you feel yeah. and you decide to obey and trust God, you've just taken a step forward. And when you do that, the grace of God shows up and meets you at that step of, fa of yeah. faith and enables you to do what you could not do before. You know, I have to tell you just the fact that I'm sitting here ministering to you, looking in the camera and not shaking, not being nervous, not quivering, not freaking out. Not sweating. Not sweating, <laughs> that's right. You know, when, we first, when I first entered the call to ministry, you know, I had been an interior designer and I'd been in business and the Lord had blessed me. I'm so thankful for that season that I had in my career. But then when he called me to full-time ministry, he instructed me, leave Egypt, don't look back, join Milan, go, go to all to whom I send you. So that's why we go everywhere together. I go to all and to speak what I command you to speak. So I was going, but I wasn't speaking. <laughs> Every time Milan would have me, he'd say, why don't you just come up and say hi? And I just, I couldn't do it in the beginning. So here's where he started. He was so gracious. He said, honey, you have to start somewhere. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you just, I'm gonna introduce you, and I want you just to stand up and smile and wave to the people. <laughs> That's where I started in ministry. And when I did that, just that, I would get so nervous. I would just sweat through my suit. I, my hands would shake, my lips would quiver. I would get so nervous just to stand up and wave. And once I started taking, but I had taken a step forward and the grace of God enabled me to get through that and have victory. Then the next step was, now Christy, why don't you come up and just say hi to the people? And I remember the first time I stood up, all I could do was say, good morning. We believe God has great things in store for us today. We love you, God bless you. And that was it. Well, let me say remember? this. The <laughs> yeah. first time, in oh, the okay. very beginning, I'm gonna go back before this <laughs> that she's talking about, when I said, baby, I want you to stand up and say something, she said, no. No way, I'm not doing it. You're no called way, to preach. Say. I'll intercede. But I'm sitting down here. Do not call. I, I'm telling you, we went through this for what, a year? Yep, we did. A year. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what she's telling you, now this is 21 years later. Yeah. But what she's telling you, this is real. This fear was so great. Yeah. And it would, yeah. I mean, it would paralyze her. Yes. She would get sick at her stomach. Mm -hmm. She would get physically ill over the fact that she might make a mistake right. and it would be embarrassing and she'd always sat in the back of the church with her family and all of a sudden she's on the front the row front. and there's TV cameras staring right, at her right. and it was terrorizing it to was. you. Yeah, fear hath torment. But once I just took those steps by faith, the grace of God did show up and enable me to keep taking steps forward. You know, it's the steps of the righteous that are ordered by the Lord. That's it's right. not the leaps and bounds. So I encourage you today just to keep taking those steps forward. I knew I was called. Now this is key. I had the dream and the vision within me. I knew I was called to go with Mylon and to speak what the Lord commanded me to speak. I had the desire. I just had to conquer the spirit of fear to get there. And this is how I did it.
Well, you've been hearing our great teaching on Don't Be a Sissy Baby. And ladies, I want to encourage you again that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And I have a powerful testimony I want to share with you from a Team Milan member in Alabama. And she writes, I am so thankful for Christy's teaching on Don't Be a Sissy Baby. I listened to it daily during my second pregnancy. I was carrying a very large baby boy and he was very painful to carry towards the end. I listened to the teaching and I wrote down all the scriptures. Wow, that's important for all of us to do. And I quoted them during the tough times. On October 2nd, I delivered a beautiful nine and a half pound baby boy without being a sissy baby. <laughs> I love that part. Thank you, Christy, for a truly God-inspired message. Well, thank you, Brooke. Your testimony just makes my day. What a blessing. And if you have a testimony of how the ministry has been a blessing to you, either through a ministry event, if you've seen us at a church, or if you've listened to one of our resources and it's really brought freedom to your life, we want to hear about it. You can email us at testimony at mylan.org. We also have many other anointed resources available on our website with so many subjects from healing to holy matrimony to supernatural increase and in provision. And you can get them all at mylan.org. And while you're there on the website, check out our itinerary. We would love to see you in person. There's just something special about all being in the room together in one accord with those of like precious faith. The corporate anointing is always life changing. Where one can put a thousand flat, two can put 10,000. So we want to see you live. Check out our itinerary and come see us soon. And ladies, keep trusting God and you'll never be a sissy baby. This was so important in me pressing through and getting free from the spirit of fear concerning my call is I just had to keep refusing how I felt yeah. and press through to obey God and take those steps and move forward. In order to move forward, you can only do that by faith. Yeah. Fear draws back, but faith will always move you forward. And faith is what pleases God. It's impossible to please Him without faith. So it will require faith for you to press through and take those steps. And when you do, you gotta do something about what you believe because faith without works is dead. So every time I stood up, I was using my faith in obedience to the Lord and pressing through how yeah. I felt yeah. to obey God. And when I would do that and take that action, just that step to stand up and go to the microphone yeah. was a big step of faith for me. But the moment I would do that and press through, the anointing would show up, God's grace would show up and enable me to do what I couldn't do before I stood up. You can do all, all things. things, anything that God calls you to do. That's it. That, is, that is in the Word of God. Yes. That He says, mm -hmm. do it this way. You can, you can do, do that yeah. through Christ, the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, will strengthen you if you're willing to just take yes. a step of faith. All that means yeah. is I believe because God said I can do it. Here's what a step of faith is. I don't know how to do this. When God called us to do this TV show, we don't know anything about a TV show. I'm 73 <laughs> right. years old, dude. Right. I, 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 I'm this a, is a step of faith. I'm you not are a right. spring chicken. <laughs> but it. we are taking mm -hmm. a step of faith because we believe we can do anything God calls us to do. And the scripture God gave me, I just want to encourage you in this as we close. 2 Corinthians 3, 5 through 6 says, My sufficiency is not in myself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, My Jesus. sufficiency is not in an education 
Whether I'm male or female, the color of skin I have, my sufficiency is not in myself, but my sufficiency is in Christ Jesus. Amen. For it is He who has made me an able minister yes. of the new covenant. Yes. So every time I would go out, I would confess those scriptures. I would speak the word mm. over, my, over my mind, over my emotions. And then as I took that step of faith, praise the Lord, He showed up. He's so good. Amen, amen. Well, man, I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, obviously, we've got some more of this, and I believe we're going to have to do another show. I this, think so. Yes. I think you're about halfway there. So <laughs> there's going to be. We'll start uh, next week on the other second half of this. And uh, we're so glad that you came and allowed us to share Jesus with you today. We love you guys. We'll be praying for you. Our goal is not just to help you to get to heaven but it's to help you to enjoy, enjoy. living here yeah. until you get to heaven. So good. Enjoy the presence of God, enjoy mm. the word of God, the kingdom of God, he calls it, that God has created just for you, just like he did for Adam and Eve. He wants you blessed. Jesus said, you should pray this, that it be on earth at your house as yeah. it is in heaven. Yeah, so good. That's the will of God for you. Amen. So we're praying for you every day. I know we don't know your names, but God does. We're mm -hmm. praying for you. We're believing God with you for his best. And we're going to keep doing that. If there's anything we can do to help you, we have a daily devotional, Church on the Run. We have this TV show. We have a monthly mm -hmm. letter. That we, all right. of it's free. Yeah. We just want to, we've been studying the Bible so, so that we can help you to understand it so that you will be free and free indeed. Amen. So we'll uh, be praying for you until next week. Please tell all your friends and family to join us. Join us. And very soon we'll meet you here on, on the, the Road, road to, to Freedom. freedom. Well, we just want to take a moment to thank you, Team Milan, for your support in prayer and in financial giving. It is such a blessing to us, and we could not do it without your help. That's right. And we want you to know that together we are making a difference in the world. We are reaching the multitudes who are in the yeah. Valley of Decision Amen. right now and letting them know that Jesus is coming soon and that He's ready to save them, deliver them, and set them free to set them on the abundant life in Christ. And if you want to be a part of Team Mylan, it's easy. You just go to mylan.org and click on Team Mylan. And we make a commitment to you to pray over you faith-filled prayers. We are believing for God's best to unfold in every area of your life. We also send you free monthly teaching, exactly what we hear from God for that moment. We deliver to you every month. We also have lots of free resources online free videos, free teaching, free downloads, just check them out. And we are honored to be a part of your life and we thank you again for your support and for your agreement. We love you, God bless you.